Coming up on today's edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast, well, the second edition of today's Locked On Raiders podcast, we'll talk about Derek Carr as he's got benched, most likely signaling the end of his Raiders career. We'll talk about his time with the Silver and Black, talk about what could be next for the Raiders, and hear from players in the locker room that will be catching passes from new starting quarterback Jared Stidham. It's all coming up on the second edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast, December 29th, 2022. Just win. Welcome here, Raider Nation, to another edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast. Thank you so much for making the show your first listen each and every day. Remember, you can find the Locked On Raider podcast free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. Thanks to my man, Ari, as I tell you each and every day. Subscriptions up on the YouTube page. Definitely appreciate that. You can find Ari on Twitter at Ari Produces. And as many of you know, uh, this is the second edition of the Lockdown Raiders podcast that I'm dropping for today. Uh, it's going back to the old QPOC days. And really, I felt like it, it had to be done, right? It had to be a, a second edition of the show today because the crossover Thursday, I didn't want to go against the grain and with what the Lockdown Podcast Network does each and every Thursday. But I think at this point, the more important conversations about Derek Carr, the quarterback position uh, with the Raiders, as opposed to the game on Sunday, just because now that we got the news about D.C. not being the starting quarterback anymore, and matter of fact, not even being with the team anymore, feels like, you know what, the game is kind of an afterthought, or the last two games of the season are an afterthought. Now, we could be pleasantly surprised come Sunday, but it feels like the right conversation is all about D.C. and what the Raiders could be doing moving forward. So that's what we're going to do here on today's second edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast. And again, the news that broke Wednesday morning around 11 o'clock when we met with head coach Josh McDaniels at the Intermountain Healthcare Performance Center is something that we've been talking about for a while. Following the loss to the Steelers on Christmas Eve, I mean, the show on Monday was about possibly Derek Carr being parked permanently, right? And just a couple days later, all of a sudden he is. And he's parked permanently at least for the rest of this season, he's not even with the team. He's been given permission to stay away from the team for the next two games and not be at practice, not be at the facility. Doesn't want to be a distraction. So I think that that makes a whole lot of sense. Uh, obviously, there was some feelings in the Raiders locker room following uh, the announcement on Wednesday, and we'll get to some of those coming up in segment number three. But who knows what the future holds for Derek Carr and the Raiders. I per- personally don't believe that he'll be back in Raiders uniform ever. Uh, Who knows if he'll be on a football field again? He said many times that if he's not playing for the Raiders, he would retire, that he's not going to play. We'll see if that's true. I actually believe him when he says that because I know he has a lot more aspirations than just playing football. So the guy had a nine-year career with the silver and black. But the main reason, and I know a lot of people ask me, well, what's the reason why, you know, they have to go ahead and decide to shut him down for the last two games of the season? And really, ultimately, it comes down to finances. And I know people don't want to hear that. Right. I had plenty of people on Raider Nation Radio 920 calling in saying, no, I don't care about the finances. I don't care about the money. Yeah, you don't. I don't. But the team does. It's not my money, so it doesn't matter. But the team cares. It's the business side of the NFL, the ugly side of the NFL. So in a nutshell, just in case you did not know, his salary of thirty three million dollars next year and seven and a half million in twenty twenty four would become guaranteed if he were to get hurt in one of the last two games of this regular season. So that's what made me feel on Monday when we had the show that he wasn't going to be playing. I had a really good feeling that he most likely wasn't going to be playing this upcoming Sunday, but you never know. You know, we asked head coach Josh McDaniels about that and he wasn't, he was very noncommittal when it came to what they were going to do. So that kind of furthered my feelings like, okay, if they were going to commit to him and say, no, he's going to be the quarterback moving forward and he'll be here in 2023. I feel like they would have said, yeah, he's playing the last two games. We're picking up the option on his contract. He'll be back. And Josh McDaniels never did that. So, uh, again, it makes it very difficult to try to trade a quarterback. And remember, Derek Carr has a no trade clause. So there's a very good chance that even if they find some team that wants him, and there's going to be plenty of teams that would want his services, he can easily say, no, no thanks. He has a no trade clause. It doesn't matter what that team is trying to offer. It doesn't matter what team it is. He could just say no. Or he could say, I'm going to retire. He can say, I'm going to walk away. Whatever the case may be, he doesn't have to go anywhere. So the Raiders might not be able to get anything out of this situation. Now, if they are able to trade him and get some draft capital, great, right? If they feel like that they have to move on and that they, you know, they need a new quarterback, a new signal caller after nine years, fine. But 
there's a good chance that they don't get anything in return for him because he might just walk away from the game. That's something that we'll find out sooner rather than later. But Jared Stidham is now the starter. Chase Garbers is the backup quarterback. And as I mentioned, Derek Carr is inactive and away from the team. So first and foremost, as I told everybody on the radio show on Wednesday, Unnecessary Roughness on Radio Nation Radio 920, I'm not going to come on here and bash Derek Carr. I'm not going to say good riddance. I'm not going to say I'm tired of him. I know some people will, and that's fine. That's your prerogative. I'm not going to say that because I know what the quarterback carousel was like before Derek Carr got there. Between Rich Gannon and Derek Carr, there was a lot of yuck. Now, that doesn't mean that the Raiders and Raider Nation can't want better than Derek Carr. That's fine. But I'm not going to come out there and disrespect the man because I think he brought a lot of stability to the organization and to that quarterback position. I've been saying that for years, even when I wanted the Raiders to go draft Jalen Hurts and, you know, start to uh, transition to the next guy. I still wanted to show that respect to D.C. because, again, uh, he's a guy that didn't, you know, grab the ball and say, hey, trade me. This team sucks. This organization sucks. I can't win here. He didn't do any of that. All he said is, I want to win as a Raider. I want to take this organization to the next level. Did he get there? No. But I think he did a hell of a job in his efforts. So for his career, if his career is officially over with the silver and black, which I do believe it is, 142 games played, 35,222 yards, 217 touchdowns, 99 interceptions. And unfortunately, the last pass potentially of his Raider career was an interception thrown to Hunter Renfro at the end of that Christmas Eve game. 63 and 79, his overall career record. And I, I said it many times on Wednesday on the radio show, and I'll say it again. There's not too many quarterbacks. There's not too many players in the league that can have, you know, a career like that and still stick around with the team. The Raiders, again, uh, appreciated Derek Carr and gave him multiple contracts and gave him a boatload of money to stabilize that quarterback position. He did. He wanted to get that 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 uh, team and the organization to the next level and win them a Super Bowl. That ultimately never happened as he visited the playoffs twice and only was able to play once because of the broken fibula he had in 2016. But I mentioned the quarterback carousel. Let me go over it real quick. Not trying to rub salt in the wounds, but this is something that I think about all the time when I think about the quarterback position. Again, not saying that I don't want the team to upgrade because at some point they were going to upgrade anyway. I mean, the thing about it is I was a Raider fan before Derek Carr. I'll be a Raider fan after Derek Carr. Uh, You know, I tell people on Raider Nation Radio, you listen to Raider podcasts and the Raider show before I was a host and you'll listen to it afterwards. You know what I mean? If, if, if that's what it is, if it's about the Raiders, it's about the Raiders. But some people made it personal and was like, no, it's about Derek Carr, and that's it, and I'm not listening to you anymore, and I'm not going to cheer on the team anymore. And if that's how you feel, that's also fine. But I remember sitting in the Coliseum and watching quarterbacks like this. In 2002, Rich Gannon. 2003, I saw Rick Meyer, Rich Gannon, and Marcus Tuiasosopo play. 2004, I saw Kerry Collins and Rich Gannon. 2005, I saw Kerry Collins and Marcus Tuiasosopo. 2006, I saw Andrew Walter and Aaron Brooks. 2007, I saw Josh McCown, Dante Culpepper, Jamarcus Russell. 2008, I saw Jamarcus Russell and Andrew Walter. 2009, I saw Jamarcus Russell, Bruce Gradkowski, Charlie Fry. 2010, Jason Campbell and Bruce Gradkowski. And I actually liked Jason Campbell. I didn't like him when they first grabbed him, but what Hugh Jackson was able to do with him, I did. And when he went down with that uh, broken collarbone, it sucked. And then they went out and made the trade for Carson Palmer. And oh, by the way, that sucked. <laughs> 2011, Carson Palmer. That's what I'm talking about. It's the year where he broke his collarbone. Jason Campbell broke his collarbone. I saw Carson Palmer in 2011, Jason Campbell, and Kyle Bowler. 2012, Carson Palmer, Terrell Pryor. 2013, Terrell Pryor, Terrell Pryor, Matt McGloin, Matt Flynn. And then 2014, 2015, 2016, Derek Carr. 2016, he also broke his fibula, so Matt McGloin played. 2017, Derek Carr, EJ Manuel. 2018, Derek Carr. 2019, Derek Carr. 2020, 2021. 2022 Derek Carr and now we'll see Jared Stidham but in between Gannon and Carr there's a whole lot of mediocrity at best so again stabilize the quarterback position I think that everyone can appreciate Derek Carr for that I said it many times and I'll continue to say it Derek Carr anytime he's around Raider Nation should eat for free he should get plenty of respect he should come to Allegiant Stadium one day whenever the dust settles and you know the wound heals and everything because look I don't blame the guy for not wanting to be around the organization right now. I mean, this, I'm sure, hurts him to his core, right? Have you ever been demoted, (laughs) right, from something that you loved? I can only imagine how bad that feels. I've been demoted from something I don't love, and it doesn't make me feel good, right? If you ever get the sense of you didn't succeed, you failed, that's, I mean, that's, that's a hard pill to swallow. And I'm sure as a professional football player and a starting quarterback of the team that you feel like you're going to take to the promised land and you can't do it, again, 
tough pill to swallow. So there you go. Derek Carr officially done for the season. Uh, we'll see what the Raiders do in the offseason. If there's a way that they decide, okay, you know what? We'll restructure this contract. We'll bring him back, maybe. But again, I I'm not going to try to blow smoke up your backside. Gut feeling tells me we've seen the very last of Derek Carr in a Raiders uniform. So what does that mean? Well, it means what or who is next? That's what we'll talk about coming up in segment number two of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. Before we get to that, though, do want to tell you about Audible. And Audible's releasing a slate of new football podcasts that, well, we're sure you're going to love them. You'll be able to find an episode from the league available as a bonus episode right now on Locked On NFL. It's narrated by Richard Sherman and Taylor Rooks. Richard Sherman, uh, Super Bowl champion, stud cornerback, Taylor Rooks on the rise. She is an absolute star. So I can imagine that Richard Sherman and Taylor Rooks together are going to be fantastic. It's an eight-part docuseries, bizarre, inspirational, unlikely stories connected to America's favorite pro sport, which is pro football. You won't want to miss the untold stories going all the way back to the 40s. They also talk about the 77 Cowboys. They talk about Bruce Lee's protege. I mean, there's a lot of things, and they all come together to talk about pro football. Each story offers equal parts history, entertainment, and social commentary. Right now, if you want to check it out, head over to Locked On NFL for a bonus episode of the league or catch the full series wherever you get your podcast. It's available right now. Audible. Get in the game. All right, Raider Nation, here we go. Segment number two of today's Locked On Raiders podcast, the second edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast for December 29th. We talked about Derek Carr. We talked about him being sat down. So what's next? Who's next? What do I think is the short-term goal for the Raiders? And what do I think is the long-term goal? And look, the long-term goal may be a bigger conversation. And the short-term goal, I'm just going off the top of my head, kind of touched on it a little bit on Monday's show. But now that it is a reality, I think it's something that's very fair to talk about. I've had multiple people text me. I've had multiple people send me tweets, direct messages. I'm sorry that I can't respond to every single one of them. It's just been too many. It's almost like the same time when the Raiders lose a game, as they've done multiple times this season, a game that they shouldn't lose, and I get flooded with a bunch of you know uh, text and, and tweets and all that, and I just don't have enough time to respond to every one of them. I apologize, but this is basically what I would say to everyone who asked me, well, what's next? Personally, I feel like they have to go with the veteran quarterback. They have to. I, I don't think that it makes sense to start the 2023 with the rookie quarterback. No disrespect to Jarrett Stidham. I remember him at Stephenville High School in Texas. I remember him at Baylor in Texas. I remember when he left Baylor, went to MCC, which is a community college there in Texas. Then he transferred to Auburn. So I remember all that about Jarrett Stidham, what he was supposed to be, who he was supposed to be, and the fact that even the Patriots tried to tell everyone that he was going to be the heir apparent to Tom Brady. Obviously, that never shook out. So do I think that Jarrett Stidham could be the guy? No. So I'll eliminate him immediately. Again, I think he's a good guy. I think he's a decent quarterback. We saw him a lot in preseason, but I think he's just what he was in preseason, a backup quarterback that was playing in preseason. I could see them re-signing him because he is a free agent after this year and keeping him in the mix because he does know Josh McDaniel's system. So that's smart. That makes a lot of sense. But for this team moving forward and the, this team to be successful moving forward, I think that they have to go and they have to get a veteran quarterback and one that they feel very comfortable with being able to run Josh McDaniel's system. It just, for me, it looked like Derek Carr was uncomfortable all year. It didn't look like Josh McDaniels was happy with the selections of where he was throwing the ball, how he was throwing the ball. It just didn't look like they were ever on the same page. And I know that there were successful moments, but there really wasn't a whole lot of success, right? And even when Derek Carr got emotional at the podium, I always felt like it was bigger than just the loss and the losses piling up on Carr. I felt like that day when I was coming out of the locker room and walking over towards the media room at Allegiant Stadium and someone said Carr was just crying on the, on the, uh, you know, at, at, the, at the podium, I thought either he had just been told he was getting released or Josh McDaniels had just got fired. That's what I thought initially had happened. So I don't know what was the conversation was. Uh, according to Vic Tafer from The Athletic, he put out a piece saying that Derek Carr didn't do enough in Mark Davis's eyes. So there's also that element where everyone's talking about Josh McDaniels and how he sucks and he's not a very good coach and he's destroying the team. Uh, you got to look at the owner as well. The owner is the guy who uh, Josh McDaniels and Dave Ziegler had to convince that Derek Carr was the right guy to commit $40 million to three days following the Super Bowl. So remember, MD signs the checks. So maybe that's the case, that he wasn't very happy with what he saw from Derek Carr. I mean, there's always that element as well. But be that as it may, you still have to, okay, how does the team move forward? And I think there's a few options. I don't think that all of them are great options. Matter of fact, I don't know how I feel about 
just about any of the options. But I think they're options, and they're, they're, they're going to be considered, no doubt, by Dave Ziegler, the GM, and head coach Josh McDaniels in the first one. And you're going to hear his name associated with the Raiders for a long time until he's not. It's Tom Brady. Tom Brady was Josh McDaniels' quarterback in New England for a very long time. Tom Brady is not having a great season, in my opinion, there in Tampa Bay. But then again, the team in Tampa Bay is not very good this year under Todd Bowles. You saw what Tom Brady was able to do. I'm not saying he's going to go to Vegas and win a Super Bowl, even though the Super Bowl is going to be in Vegas in 2024. I'm not saying he's going to be that guy. And I know if you look at his numbers, they're not really bad. 4,129 yards, 21 touchdowns, and nine interceptions. I still think Tom Brady is uh, a shell of himself. He's much older. Father time catches up to everyone at some point. He's avoided it like the plague. He's done a really good job with that. I don't know if all of a sudden an offseason and, and him coming to Vegas is going to make him rejuvenated and give him an extra year or two where he can find the fountain of youth and play at a very high level. But I do know Josh McDaniels is very comfortable with him. So I can see that as a, as a big-time option. He still has a very accurate deep ball, and I know Josh McDaniels' offense is about the deep ball as well. He wants to take shots down the field. so. That there's something there. Jimmy G is another name you're going to hear a lot of. Obviously, Jimmy G is going to be available following the season. He's with the 49ers right now. He's injured. Jimmy G being injured is the story of Jimmy G's life. Jimmy G is always injured. Does he have the, the numbers this year? No, he hasn't played all year either. 20, 2,437 yards, 16 TDs, four interceptions. Injured at the beginning of the year and injured right now, <laughs> right? Uh, Brock Purdy obviously is doing some really good things with the 49ers. That defense in the run game is obviously helping out. We'll see Brock Purdy up close and personal on Sunday at Allegiant Stadium. But Jimmy G is another guy who knows Josh McDaniels' offense very well. So his name is going to be associated with the Raiders. Tom Brady, I could probably I could probably say, okay, I could sign off on. Not that I have to sign off on it. I can, I can say, okay, I see it for a year or two max with Tom Brady just because it's Tom Brady. Right. And so I could see that being a, a, a better sell to the fan base. And then you just hope for the best and hope that the heat comes out and is playing, you know, hair on fire. Jimmy G, I feel like that's a lateral move at best. I really do. And his deep ball is not very good. The accuracy on his deep ball is not very good at all. 49er folks. I've talked to plenty of 49er folks and they say, yeah, that's the that's the thing that is his struggle. His deep ball is not very good. So I think that Jimmy G is a lateral move at best. I don't know what what kind of money he's going to require on the open market, but I know he's going to have a few options once the season's over because everyone needs a quarterback. Another guy who's not a free agent, but if you're trying to please Devontae Adams or keeping him in town, maybe Aaron Rodgers, maybe you try to make a move with the Green Bay Packers. Problem is, if Green Bay trades him, they take a $41 million dead cap hit. They can't afford to do that, right? And then the Raiders would have to pay $53 million signing bonus uh, March 1st and then $40 million over the next two seasons. Is it doable? Sure. Do I think that they want to do that? Nah. And again, the $41 million dead cap hit that Green Bay would take, I can't see it. I really can't. I think that that would just be insane. Now, if they did something to his deal and restructured it and he just wanted to get the hell out of Green Bay, maybe. Now, he doesn't know Josh McDaniel's system, but you know Aaron Rodgers has a strong arm. You know Aaron Rodgers is a damn good quarterback, and you know he is very familiar with Devontae Adams and knows how to get the most out of him, something that I don't think we've seen the best out of Devontae Adams this year with the Raiders. There's been a lot of incomplete when it comes to Devontae Adams. I mean, hell, he's had, what, four games this season where he's had four catches or less? That just doesn't happen. So Aaron Rodgers, I think, is a, is a possibility, but a very, very, very long shot possibility. Then you have free agents like Baker Mayfield. For me, no thanks. I know he would love Las Vegas, but no thanks, <laughs> right? I just... There's a reason why he's been a free agent multiple times, or not a free agent, but he's been moved multiple times. Started out with the Browns. Then he went to, what, the Panthers, and now the Rams. I just, I don't know, man. If you're on three teams in one calendar year, there's probably something that's a little bit of an issue with you. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm cool off Baker Mayfield. Jacoby Brissett's another guy who knows Josh McDaniel's system, worked with him in New England. But Jacoby Brissett was the backup quarterback in, in Houston, or, or not Houston, excuse me, in Cleveland. He was taking the role uh, in, in the starter until Deshaun Watson got there. Cleveland needed a new quarterback so bad that they went out and, and picked up Deshaun Watson with all the baggage he had, made all the trades that they did, or gave up all the capital they did to get him, also gave him a boatload of fully guaranteed money just to get him so Jacoby Brissett wasn't their quarterback. So there's that. Uh, I mentioned Jarrett Stidham already. I think he'll be re-signed as a backup. And then the long, long, long shot, the longer shot than even Aaron Rodgers would be Lamar Jackson. We know that he's going to be a free agent technically, 
The Ravens are not going to let him walk for free. So they would obviously franchise him. That would give the Raiders would have to trade draft capital to get him and have to give him a boatload of money. And if I'm Lamar Jackson, it's just me. If I'm Lamar Jackson, I'm saying, hey, that cat in Houston, not Houston. I always say Houston when I think of Deshaun Watson. Cleveland, that contract he got, I want that and then some. That's that's what I'm saying if I'm Lamar Jackson. So I don't know if the Raiders would want to do that. I know the fan base would be fired up by Lamar Jackson in Vegas. That'd be awesome. I'd love to see it. I just don't see that actually happening. So realistically, I'm looking at Tom Brady for a very short term, two years max. Jimmy G, two years max, one year preferably. Not even that. I really, I mean, again, I feel like it's a lateral move. And then Aaron Rodgers, I think, is a long shot, but a better long shot than a Lamar Jackson. And then in the meantime, in between time, the Raiders draft somebody and sit them behind that veteran and allow them to develop while they still have Devontae Adams in the mix, Josh Jacobs hopefully in the mix, and, you know, Darren Waller, Hunter Renfro still in the mix. They have their core still together so the team could have a chance of being a winner. You don't want to tear this down to the nuts and bolts and all of a sudden make it 100% rebuild again. That's the last thing that you want to do. But if you want to try to keep Devontae Adams, if you want to try to keep others in the mix, you have to get this next quarterback right, and these guys have to be happy with that. Speaking of Devontae Adams, you'll hear from him coming up in segment number three. You'll also hear from Darren Waller, Hunter Renfro, Mac Hollins, all guys in the Raiders locker room following Wednesday's practice after it was already announced that Derek Carr would not be the starting quarterback the rest of the season. We'll get to that after I tell you about a couple of great sponsors, including betonline.net. They're your number one source for sports betting information, stats, news, and analysis. You can get the latest odds and trends for every pro and amateur league out there from pro football, college bowl season, hoop game. Uh, they got it all at betonline.net. If you love sports podcasts, and we know that you do, you can find those as well at betonline.net. They're the fastest and easiest way to get your betting information on. All you got to do is head to the website today on your laptop or your mobile device to learn about more. Betonline.net. That is where the game starts. I also want to remind you, since it is the holiday season, and there's going to be a lot of folks here in Las Vegas driving around on New Year's Eve and New Year's Day, that if you drive high, it's considered driving under the influence. That's right. Driving under the influence of weed is against the law in every state. It's against the law in Las Vegas where weed is legal. That means driving high will get you a DUI. If you think law enforcement can't tell when you're driving high, you're wrong. Your friends could all tell. Your coworkers could tell. You know your parents could tell. Everyone could tell. So what makes you think law enforcement officers don't know when you're driving high? Driving, un, driving under the influence of weed could slow your response time and change how you perceive time and speed. So even if you think you're fine to drive when you're high, you're really not. Bottom line is, if you feel different, you drive different. And driving high is driving under the influence. So remember, drive high, get a DUI. Paid for by the NHTSA. Here we go, Raider Nation. Segment number three of today's Locked On Raiders podcast, part two of the Locked On Raiders podcast for December 29th. Want to take you inside the Raiders locker room, get you and let you hear the reaction from some of the players that are going to be catching passes from new starting quarterback, Jarrett Stidham. Of course, Devontae Adams is the one that Raider Nation is really concerned about. Is he going to want to play uh, with another quarterback? Is he going to want to stay with the silver and black? Some people think it's a no-brainer because he's a, it's a business and he got paid and he loves the Raiders, so that's what he's going to do. Others aren't so sure. Well, I'll just say this. Devontae put, uh, Adams put out a, a piece on Instagram, and I'm not an Instagram guy, but it's floating around Twitter right now. Uh, it says, and it's a picture of him and Derek Carr when Devontae Adams' jersey was uh, retired at Fresno State, and he said, this man gave everything he had, one of the most disciplined and loving people I know. Got my brother's back through whatever, and if you can't respect it, excuse my language, but it has a middle finger emoji, you. And then a shrug in the shoulders, love you, bruh. That's from Devontae Adams on Instagram, so I wanted to pass that along before I let you hear what Devontae Adams had to say in the Raiders locker room. So thanks to my man Vinny Bonsignor who sent over not only Devontae Adams, Hunter Renfro, Darren Waller, and Mac Hollins. Here is Adams in the locker room following practice on Wednesday. Devontae, obviously a, a tough day. Um, you know, not only a, your quarterback, but a, a good friend of yours. Uh, what was kind of the reaction of when you got the news? Um, well, I mean, I don't want to sit here and make this entire thing about that. I think we're just going to knock this out in, in, a, in a little single hitter here. But I mean, um, obviously, I don't think anybody was excited about it in here. Um, you know, him being one of one of my really good friends, and you know the reason why I came here in the first place. I mean, I wouldn't I wouldn't be here right now if he wasn't the you know if he wasn't here. So um, I think everybody knows how I feel about him, and and you know, with that said, there's uh, there's uh, a process of how things go, and 
I'm not going to sit here and, and go on and on, but obviously I support my guy and, um, you know, I, you know, we, we got to finish the season out, you know, the best way we can possible with, you know, all things considered at this point. But, uh, yeah, any, anything else that you guys got, you can you can leave that for, for Coach or, or Derek. Does this change anything about how you view uh, where you are and the situation moving forward? Um, well, we got two games left. We got the Niners this week, and then we got a, another game to go ahead and, and finish. So that's really all that I'm really focused on. Do you reach out to Derek tonight and talk to him uh, a little bit? Well, we spoke already, so we'll... Uh, yeah, we, we talked. Probably won't talk again tonight, but you know, we, we spoke already. Same way that I, that I approach every single game. I mean, uh, it's not the first time that the quarterback that I started the season with is not going to be finishing the season, whether it was injury or, or otherwise. So, um, you know, we got the, the ball keeps rolling. Got to got to figure it out. Um, you know, I've, I've played I played eight years without him, and. You know, that was that was what I had to do then, and this is what I have to do for the remainder of the season, and then moving forward, we'll see how everything goes from there. What have you liked about uh, practicing with Jarrett now getting his opportunity? You said what I would like about Yeah, what, what, what stands out about him as a quarterback? I mean, you got a guy that doesn't have really any experience out there. He's just kind of playing loose, and you know, sometimes that can that can help him. Whatever whatever's going to be, you know, make allow him to go out there and play to the best of his ability. Uh, you know, obviously we support and want to encourage him to do the best that he can. Obviously, uh, you know, for the betterment of the team and himself as well. So there you go, Devontae Adams in the Raiders locker room, and I'll tell you right now, what I heard there was a guy committed to the next two games, and then the rest is we'll see what happens. Right. There's nothing he's saying there is saying, yeah, I'm going to be here for the long haul. What it sounded like to me is I'm here for the next two games. We'll get the rap season wrapped up and then we'll go from there and figure out what's coming up next. That's what I heard. Not saying that that's what happened. Remember, that's immediately after practice on Wednesday. So it's still raw. It's still fresh. Hasn't really had a lot of time to think about it. Sit down and you know talk to his agent or whatever the case may be. So take it for what it's worth. But it didn't sound 100 percent committal that Devontae Adams is going to be back next season so we'll see what happens another guy that catches passes from Derek Carr and now will be catching passes from Jarrett Stidham is Hunter Renfro him and Waller have not played a lot this season but obviously they're big factors and they developed a pretty good relationship on the field for sure when it comes to DC so here's Hunter Renfro in the Raiders locker room I know some days are a little tougher than others um, no, sorry. Uh, you know it's a business obviously and making a change at quarterback what you know obviously you want to support your Jared, and at the same yeah. time, Derek. Yeah. What are your thoughts on? I mean, Derek's a tremendous leader, um, tremendous football player. Uh, you know, it's tough, tough. You know, being good friends with him and tough. You know, seeing him as the guy. Um, you know, I didn't make that decision, and um, you know, that that's that's that was that's the decision they made, and so that's what it is. Obviously, it's a team sport, and so when a change like that happens, it's probably a reflection of what's going on with the team and not just at that position, I would imagine. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, I mean, he he won a lot of games for us, and um, even down the stretch here, he, he was the reason we won a lot of them. And um, I, think, uh, I think just his, you know, just an amazing leader and hope to uh, play with him again. Sometime. Is there a sense of what the feeling is in the locker room over that decision when you guys learned of, of what was going on? Yeah, it was kind of shocking. I mean, because we still have a chance, you yeah. know. Um, so that's, you know, disappointing. But, uh, you know, I'm, I don't get paid to make those decisions. That said, Jared is next yeah. man up. Yeah, super uh, excited for Jared Chase. Going to have a chance. And, um, you know, we're going to play extremely hard for them. You know, it's not it's not their decision. Um and so, you know, they come in every day and they work extremely hard and um, they deserve an opportunity. And so, you know, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll play hard for them. So there you go. Hunter Renfro uh, talked about, you know, that's not my decision. I don't get paid to make those decisions. That's those guys. I mean, that's, you know, and what else can he say? He can't go against the grain right now. Uh, similar to Devontae Adams, there's still two more games left. But Hunter got paid in the offseason. You know, he gave, got the contract extension. Darren Waller got the contract extension. And, of course, Devontae Adams also got the contract extension. But you heard Adams earlier say, I'm here because of Derek Carr. He's the reason why I'm here. So that, to me, carries a little bit more weight than just getting a contract extension and being with the team right now. So there could be some moving and shaking when it comes to Adams. Renfro, I'm sure he'll be around as long as he wants to be around, as long as his contract is, is good. Darren Waller, he's another guy. Missed a lot of time. There was rumblings 
for years, well, at least last year, that he wasn't a big fan of D.C. Uh, I think Derek Carr and, and, and Darren Waller did some good things on the field. Uh, it's a brief, less than a minute here of Darren Waller in the Raiders locker room, but here he is talking about the news of Derek Carr being sat down for the couple seasons, couple games to end the season. Kind of some big news today, uh, replacing the quarterback. What was the general reaction um, when you heard the news? Um, uh, it's a reaction where you got to kind of take emotions out of it and just realize that the only thing that be productive is to support uh, Jared going forward. And guys are excited about him uh, being able to get an opportunity. So uh, we're rallying around him, letting him know that we believe in him and, uh, you know, just trying to do what we can to prepare for San Francisco. How difficult is it to take the emotions out? I mean, obviously, it's an emotional thing. Or, I mean, you, somebody you've been alongside with loses a job, essentially. So, I mean, how, how tough is it to separate those things? Oh, yeah, uh, naturally it's tough. Um, but I believe two things can coexist, like believing in Derek, believing that he will always be able to get it done, but also supporting Jared and moving forward uh, with this week and preparing. So uh, I think that the two can coexist. So short and sweet right there. Vinny got a question in, and Adam Hill got a question in. And that was just about it. Uh, Darren Waller didn't have a whole lot to say about it, but it sounds like it's going to be business as usual for him, and he's going to do the best he can with Jared Stidham, and that's all, Raider Nation, that's all we can ask him to do. Sunday is going to be an interesting game. I want to see how this team comes out and reacts with, the, with Jared Stidham behind center from number three behind center instead of having number four behind center. Let's close things out with Mac Hollins. Uh, he's developed a really good relationship. He's actually the number two receiver on the team right now due to injury to Hunter Renfro and Darren Waller. Here's what Mac Hollins had to say in the Raiders locker room following the practice on Wednesday. Yeah, some days in this profession are probably a little bit tougher than others. Yep. Um, you know, the replacement of your quarterback. Uh, what was the kind of reaction when you guys heard that that was going down like that? Oh, um, yeah, I think I can only speak for myself. Uh, I've only been here a short, short amount of time, but Derek's made a big impact on me. He's a great, great guy, great player. Uh, and obviously has been for this organization for a long time. Uh, I think he's somebody that's probably have more head coaches and GMs than any other quarterback in the league and he's kind of been whenever I've thought of the Raiders it was I thought of Derek Carr and he's kind of been somebody who's been the I guess not cornerstone but been somebody who's been around for a while so uh, it's obviously tough but that's unfortunately how this business goes and I'm I'm a I tell I say it all the time like I'm a soldier at the end of the day my job is to if they switch the weapon I use then learn to use that weapon well right Um, uh, I have full confidence in Stiddy. Like Stiddy's, Stiddy's the man too. He, he's, a, he's here for a reason, and um, whatever the coaches decided to do is what they decided to do. Um, I know football being a team sport, and you understanding that when you make a switch like that, it's probably reflective of not just the quarterback that things aren't necessarily going the way you guys want to go as a team. Um, I mean, obviously, I've never made that type of decision before, um, so I'm not sure what really goes behind it. Uh, but I, I would say nobody here is ecstatic with the record that we have because right. everybody wants to be the best team in the league like everybody if you're here you're here because you're a competitor and you want to be the best and we're not the best right now so uh what but into the decision not sure uh it's more of a josh question but for me i think we're just we got to go out and continue to compete you are one of the captains yeah. here what was kind of the reaction when when you did get the news when you guys got the news it- um i don't know i think i played a long time so nothing unfortunately nothing really phases me uh, not that it was in a good way or bad way. It was just it's kind of something that happens in this business. Right. Uh, and I'm quite a few pay grades away from uh, making that decision or right. even being in that room where that decision has really happened. So uh, my job is when I come out to practice, hey, whoever's back there. And guys say it all the time, even at receivers, like if you're out there, you're the starter. Right. Um, and I've seen myself kind of build into that where I wasn't the starter but trusted myself to be one right. until I got that moment. So. Same thing, Stiddy's mind. You know, now he's getting an opportunity right. and make the most of it. So there it is, right there, Mac Hollins in the Raiders locker room. So uh, hopefully, it took you a little, give you a little insight into how some of the players are feeling. The locker room will be open again today. Uh, I won't be able to be there because I'll be on the radio at the time. But uh, hopefully, Vinny's able to send me over some more sound from different players in the locker room as well. Uh, because again, all these guys got to get used to the fact that Derek Carr will not be in the game. He will not be at the game. He's not even around the team for the next couple of games. And who knows if we actually ever see him around the team again, uh, gut feeling like I started the show off saying, don't think so. I think that Carr's career with the silver and black is over. Does he choose to play elsewhere? Maybe, or he might choose to walk away. That is still TBD. 
to be determined. But that's it for today's double edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast. Taking it back to the old QPOC days, the double disc, right? Like you used to put the all eyes on me, drop it in the CD player and travel across wherever. Like I used to travel across the bay bumping all eyes on me and I never had to press skip or whatever because every song was a slapper, was a banger, was, you know, was off the chain. So there you go. We're taking it back to the old QPOC days there uh, with this one. Uh, Who knows what we'll do tomorrow? (laughs) For Fridays, who knows what Thursday is going to actually have, right? Who knows what's going to happen today? Um, There's still plenty of time for more news and notes, and so we'll see what happens. But uh, that's all I got time for today, Raider Nation. Hopefully you enjoyed this show, and hopefully you enjoyed the crossover edition as well. Until Friday, take care of yourself, take care of your family. Love on your family, and most importantly, as always, just win, baby.